My name is Archana, and this session is Introduction to Tableau Prep. And I've been a product consultant here at Tableau for about two years now. But before that, my first venture into the world of data and analytics was as a bright-eyed intern um, for a UK supermarket chain. And as an intern, I never used SQL before. And I was given two-day SQL training from a graduate not much older than me. So you can imagine kind of how the internship went because I was running really inefficient queries that would take hours to run. And then when they finally did, they would be the wrong results. There was a leaderboard um, that they had up on the screen in the office with like the person using up the most resources on the database. And my name in the top five was there three times. That's how bad it was. I had people emailing me from India being like, what are you doing? Stop, who are you? You're just the intern. Um, but it was during that internship that I also learned about Tableau and how the power of visual analytics could have cut out eight weeks out of that original 10 week internship. And that's why I jumped at the chance to present this specific session on Tableau Prep to you guys today, because I think if I had prep, it would have cut out those two weeks, then down to one week, and then I could have taken two months off to go on holiday instead. Um, so this is now the second time um, Tableau Prep is being presented at conference since it officially released as a product, yesterday being the first. Um, yeah, so that session was, was being live streamed and is also recorded, so you guys can watch it back as well later on. So with that, I want, to, want you guys to leave this session with an understanding of what Tableau Prep is and what it can do. And then through four different examples, we're going to meet these five characters along the bottom. And hopefully you resonate with one of those characters, because then you're probably a really good candidate for someone who should be using Tableau Prep. And then finally, also, I want you guys to just leave feeling excited to try Tableau Prep if you haven't already, and also look ahead to what's coming. So. Data prep is challenging, I'm sure all of you guys identify with that. You'll often be trying to get data in the right format, but get stuck either because existing tools are too complicated or required specialized skills, or it might even be that the tool itself is too expensive so you don't actually have a data prep tool in your organization. And as a result, you might need to ask someone else to do that data prep for you or um, just give up. So any of you guys in that scenario? Yeah, where you have to ask someone else to do it, or you've just given up. Yeah. Um, I've often heard customers say that they don't really have data prep challenges. And I think that's probably because they're just not bothering to do the data prep at all. So imagine the lost opportunity there in that missed analysis or the missed insights that that could have led to. So even when you have someone else doing the data prep for you, um, there can sometimes still be a gap between what they give you in terms of the output and the analysis you're trying to achieve, simply because that person in the middle doesn't understand your needs. According to the Harvard Business Review, many analysts spend 80% of their time prepping data and just 20% of it analyzing it. We want our customers to spend more time answering the questions from their data and so reverse that ratio, and that's why we developed Tableau Prep. So we're taking the Tableau approach to data prep, visual and direct. We're using smart defaults so that you're not wasting time. And of course, it's integrated tightly with the rest of the Tableau platform, whether that be desktop, online, or server. So let's start with visual and direct. The flow and profile planes, as well as the data grid, give you a complete picture of your flow end to end, as well as the underlying rows of data. You can even interact directly with the profile pane and start to do things like filter values, create groups, and make changes to the data, and instantly see the results of those actions, even on millions of rows of data. By far, though, my favorite thing about prep is the visual cues that makes, make those complex tasks really simple. It's the thing that would have saved me hours during that internship, trying to understand the difference between the inner and the left join. So Tableau Prep also uses smart algorithms to fix common data prep challenges. An example here being fuzzy clustering that let you group, um, group different items by pronunciation with just one click. By intelligently pushing down operations to the database level when possible, I'm also able to focus in on staying in the flow rather than worrying about how the design of it makes it more or less efficient. Take this example. I want to look at my monthly sales aggregated by city. But I realized towards the end of creating this flow that I actually only need the UK data. But with prep, I can add that step in the end and not worry about the, um, the flow output 
since it's going to push that keep UK only to the database level so that for the prior two steps we're only pulling in the UK data. How many of you guys have used Tableau Prep before? Just raise your hands. Okay, for those of you guys who shook your head no, don't worry, it should famil feel familiar to you anyway. With the same seamless drag and drop interface, the same calculation language and immediate feedback, it shouldn't feel like a new, new tool to learn. Instead, you should be able to get up to speed pretty quickly. It's also easy to open your flow with Tableau Desktop or to publish it to Tableau Server or online. Again, it's bridging that gap between the analytics and the data prep output. So what can Tableau Prep actually do? Tableau Prep lets you combine and integrate multiple data sets through joins and unions, interact within clean data sets using grouping, splits, and calculations, and finally reshape and aggregate your data. So like I said at the beginning, we're going to be looking at four examples and meet these five characters. Um, during these examples, I just want you to sit back and relax. Like I said at the beginning, the slides as well as, as, well as the data sets and flows will be made available to you. So don't worry about the, sp the specifics of the example. Instead, think about the data prep challenges that each of these characters are facing and how you can take home those concepts and try to solve those problems using prep. So let's get started. So in the same way a, di a DJ can curate a playlist, or I guess these days it might be Spotify or Apple Music instead, the data DJ is someone who's curating the data source for, the, for their team or the rest of the wider organization. They need to be able to do all those things I mentioned earlier, combining data sources, cleaning, cleaning fields, creating calcul calculated fields as well, and then finally share the result of that to ta Tableau Online or server as a published data source, the single source of truth that everyone else can leverage in their own analysis. So to start with, we're going to start with a data set that you guys should be familiar with if you've ever seen a demo from us, Superstore. Now, Superstore in the EU specifically has had some troubles with um, sales of tables in the Netherlands. Um, we're selling a lot of tables, but we're losing money on them. So the decision was made by the, um, by the managers of Superstore to acquire a new set of stores called Supply Max, based entirely in the Netherlands. What I want to do as an analyst is understand um, if buying those stores of Supply Max makes a difference to my total sales. So we want to combine two different data sources. So let's take a look at how we could do that with prep. Oops. I am not sharing my screen. <laughs> there we go. So because we're in the middle of the acquisition at the moment and our two data systems haven't been combined yet, we have the Supply Max data in a CSV file. So let's go ahead and connect to that first. So it's Superstore, Supply Max, Netherlands, and bring that in. So we're waiting for, first of all, the data to load in, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my first step. I'm just pulling out the changes callout that will document the changes that we make to the data set as we go along. The first thing to notice is the profile pane, where we're using um, kind of histograms or bar charts to show the distribution of the data so that we can start to spot patterns and outliers before we even get to Tableau Desktop. So as I scroll along, we can start to look at the distribution of the data. And I want to call out the ability to start doing some simple analysis. For example, sorting by city. Here, we can see that most of our orders are coming from Amsterdam, which makes sense because it's the biggest city in the Netherlands. If I scroll back, we can also begin to spot outliers. Take a look at this value here. We have negative $10,000 worth of sales, um, which doesn't make sense because I know that this data set doesn't contain any returns. If I go ahead and click that, it's going to highlight um, that entry across my entire data set. So we can start to see that this is probably a data en entry issue since the unit sold value is zero and the customer name is null. So it's probably just some rogue records in there. So let me go ahead and exclude that to start. And you can see that update live in the profile pane. Next thing is the ship modes. We've here got first and first class, second and second class. Now you and I both know that that means the same thing. And so does prep. All I have to do is tell it to group and, group and replace by pronunciation. And on my thousands of rows, that's being updated live. Now that I'm happy with the 
um, cleanup that I've done to this data set. Let's go ahead and bring in our SQL server, so the existing data that we have for Superstore. So this is going to be in an actual database because this is our own data. It's not from the stores we've acquired. So let me go ahead and sign in. Go to my EU Superstore and bring in the orders table. Now here, because we want to append the new rows underneath the existing rows, the operation we're going to be using is a union. And you can see that as I drag and drop, we get the option there. So just drop it onto the visualization. And as the data loads in, we can start to see those visual cues come into play. Here, for example, with product ID, we can see that the blue um, stripe to indicate that this is coming from the CSV file, whereas the orange stripe indicates that this is coming from the orders SQL server table. So we can start to spot where things might be going wrong. Here we've got units sold, but there isn't a match for it in our orange um, SQL Server data. So let me go ahead and show only the mismatch fields. And here we can see why. It's being called quantity in our other data set. There's no need to bother renaming the fields. Instead, I can just drag and drop to merge those two together. I'll leave company as is because it's going to help us identify which stores belong to SupplyMax. Um, when we do our analysis later. So let's go ahead and add the next clean step. Here in our data set, we've only got our product IDs. If I scroll along, we'll see that we have no information about the actual product itself, the product name, the category or subcategory it belongs to. For that, I need to bring in a third data source, my master product list. Let's bring that in. And you can see that in pink at the bottom. We'll drag and drop to tell Tableau, that, Tableau Prep that this time we want to do a join between those two tables. And this is the thing that wows me every time I use Tableau Prep, this summary of join results right here. Because here I can see that 2,369 values are being excluded from my master product list when I perform an inner join. We can see those values here highlighted in red too. If I go ahead and switch that to a right join, therefore including everything from the product list, we'll see that update live. So my value here for the excluded values drops to zero, and my final join result instead contains 18,000 rows. Now, when we think of the type of analysis we're trying to do here, I can use this to better understand that I don't need to do a right join here because not every product listed in that master product list would have been sold. So the correct type of join to do is, of course, an inner join. But still, there are some values being excluded from the other table. We've got these 10 rows here. Let's click on that and see what's going on. And it's these product IDs that stand out as an anomaly. It's got those three dashes at the end that probably mean that they can't find the match for it in my master product table. And I don't need to go back to my database to make those changes. I can just do it from this window. Once I've done that, you can see the excluded values now update to zero, and we can see the final join result is bringing in all 15,682 rows in my data set. So as my final step, let me go ahead and add an output. And this time, I'm going to publish this as a data source to Tableau Online. So all things good. I should be able to sign in. It doesn't help when you have a long surname when you try to do these things live because you end up spelling your own name wrong. There we go. Hmm. Let's try that again. Oh, there we go. I can go ahead and select the project I want to publish to and give it a name. Supply max acquisition. There we go. And hit run flow. So while that publishes, um, I'm just going to walk through those steps that I, that I did for one last time. So we started by bringing in a CSV file, but we noticed some problems with the data. So we had to filter some values out, as well as group and replace some of them by pronunciation. Then we needed to combine that with our existing SQL Server data and perform a cross-data source union to bring those two data sources together. 
Finally, we brought in a third data set, this time an Excel file rather than a text file. And that, um, with that, we performed a join. So now you can see the published data set is live on Tableau Online. And my users, if they're explorers or creators on Tableau Online, can go ahead and create a new workbook from right within the browser. For any users who do have desktop, they can go ahead and connect to that data source from desktop too. So next we've got our logs investigator. Is anyone in the room here a server administrator for their Tableau server? You are. Okay, two. <laughs> Whether you're administering Tableau server or one of many other programs, one thing you might need to do is analyze logs. Now I want to show you how the clean step in Tableau prep can help you dive into those logs without having to pass through lines and lines of code. So for the rest of you, this next slide is going to be kind of scary because it's what Tableau server logs actually look like. They're, hor they're horrifying. Even this is the reason why I don't like Tableau servers because things like this exist and I'm more of a SAS girl. Um, so log files can, like this can look pretty scary. And some of you guys, uh, I guess I keep saying you guys, one of you guys <laughs> might be familiar with the tool Lumberjack. Are you guys? Lumberjack? Okay, so Lumberjack is a VBA script that will convert those log files into a tabular structure so that then you can start to analyze them in Tableau. And a colleague of mine, Tom Christian, the guy who was presenting um, I am Viz with me earlier, but also in this room just before, has created Lumberflume. It's a Tableau prep flow that achieves the same thing as this script. And it just looks like that. That's it. That's what the flow is. It's just three steps, and one of them is an input, and one of them is an output. So you can kind of think of it as a one-step flow. That single step is a cleaning step that has a series of string calculations to just pass out the different fields we need from the logs. That's all it's doing. So now where we were in the old world of scripting, now anyone can go ahead and create data where there is none. Our next, yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm also a SAS type person, which is why we use Tableau Online. Yeah. Um, not at the moment, no. We don't make that available. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I think it's unlikely we will. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> so our next character is the workaround wizard. This is someone who's a master of transfiguration, whether it be an Excel, Tableau Desktop's data source pane, or some other tool. It's the person using Tableau to create vises and types of analysis that our dev team probably never even imagined. They, they already know what needs to be done to the data to make it easier to analyze, but they're a whiz when it comes to bending the tools they have to be able to give them the results they need. Now Tableau Prep will give you all the functionality of the data source pane in desktop and more. And this is where it's really powerful and does so much more than desktop. It's that ability to rejig the order in which you're doing those steps. So whereas desktop confines you to perhaps being able to do a join and then a union in that specific order, um, prep will allow you to swap those around. So you can do a join and then a union and then a pivot, or a pivot, a union, and join, whatever combination you need. You determine the flow. There are also things in prep that you can't currently do in desktop. Things like double pivoting the data, so being able to do a pivot and then a pivot again, which we're going to see in just a second, as well as put what you just saw with cross data source unions. So these are really powerful things that just take prep up to that next level from the data source pane in desktop. So when I first learned about prep here at Tableau, my mind went straight to survey data. I'd already written the blog post for our website on how to prepare survey data using Tableau desktop. And so I was keen to see how prep would handle those same situations. And so that's why I asked you guys to fill out that survey at the beginning, because I'm going to collect that data and we're going to now analyze that live. So let's go ahead and do that. So I was using Typeform, whoops, Typeform, um, to collect those survey results. So the ones in the small, smaller font there are you guys from today's session. Um, so let me go ahead and download this as a CSV. And then go ahead and open a new prep flow. So I want to connect a text file. It's now in my downloads folder and it's the most recent one. So 
So here, when the data comes in, um, it's, it's in a format that isn't right for analysis in Tableau. It's what we call wide and short data rather than tall and thin. Um, and with regards to survey data specifically, survey data tends to come in a human readable format where it's a row per respondent. So that then you can just read along and, um, for example, look at Adam Cook. That's my manager. So we can look at Adam Cook and say, he's a Tableau employee. He's from here. This is how long he's be been using Tableau, blah, blah, blah. But for a computer trying to do the analytics and trying to answer questions and create visualizations out of it, the way we need the data structured instead is a row per respondent per question. And so to do that, we need to take some of those columns and pivot them into rows. So let me go ahead and do that. So let's add a pivot step this time. And we're looking at just three questions in this data set. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, well, I didn't answer three questions in that survey. They were way more questions. But with survey data, what you want to do is keep um, the demographic type of field, so where you're from, your age, gender, that kind of thing, outside of the pivot, because those need to be kept as dimensions that will then slice and dice the data by later when we start to build dashboards. So let me go ahead and drag and drop these in. Rename this to question. This one to answers and then see what that's done to the data. So here, if I just zoom in, we can see where we had three columns previously, the experience rating, the most, what you're most excited to do here, and products. Those three columns have now been transposed into one single one, and then the corresponding answers are also contained in one single column. But here we come to a second problem with survey data that I've seen many customers come across. It's the way the data is stored. In the survey, I asked you guys um, which Tableau products you use, desktop, online, server, or prep. And the way that data has been collected is, is it's all stored in a single cell. So I can only do counts on the combinations of products that people are using. Uh, trying to answer the question how many people do use desktop with this data set is going to be pretty tricky because I'd have to count across all these different combinations. So what we need to do is split these out into four separate columns. So for that, I just have to click on this field and create a custom split on the comma, which is our delimiter in this case, and set this to all. So now you'll see we've got these four columns and our products are separated out. So then we can transpose them again to put them in a single column. This one I can go ahead and hide because I don't need that anymore. So here's the step that we wouldn't be able to do in Tableau Desktop. We're going to re-pivot the data for a second time. We're going to take those answers and pivot them again so that now our Tableau Desktop, Online, Prep, and Server, I'll just zoom in on that, are contained in one single column, and those counts will be correct. So here I'm just going to name this Responses and just hide the field that was created as a result. We don't need that in our analysis. The last thing I'm going to do is the thing you have to know when you pivot data like that is it starts to generate more null fields and um, empty values. And that's because when we split out those columns, there's going to be four columns created. But suppose that you only use Tableau Desktop. Then for the other remaining three columns, they're going to be empty. So that's where all those nulls are coming from. They'd be three empty rows now, yeah, now that we've transposed, which is why we need to go ahead and exclude them. So with that, I'm happy with my final data set, so let me go ahead and write this output. So I'll add an output step, and this time I'm going to just save this as a hyper extract. So I'm just going to choose where I want to save it. But, yes. And then we're going to hit run flow. It's just asking me if I want to replace the data source, and I'll go ahead and say yes, and then open in desktop a dashboard that I created during yesterday's session. So these are the responses from yesterday's session. Um, I've just got a data source filter on there, so let me go ahead and edit that data source filter so that it is instead... Uh, oh, it's from today. Let me try refreshing the data source. So rather than yesterday's data, it should include today's. And then if I refresh it, 
these should be the updated results, and I think they are. I think I made the mistake of not switching out my data source photo prior to the session. Um, but we can see here how um, now we have the data in the right shape to be able to do the analysis that we want. So I mentioned keeping those dimensions separate, so things like where you're from, how long you've been using Tableau for, those are separate dimensions. And the reason for that is because that's what enables you to have the interactivity that you're used to seeing in desktop. So for example, now we've got someone in the room here from India, or said they're from India. Um, I can go ahead and click that and see that that person's been using Tableau for about four years and this is their first conference. They're using desktop and server, rated conference three out of five, and we're here to get inspired. So hopefully they leave feeling that way. Let me go ahead and save that and then jump to my final example. So at the very beginning, I mentioned that we'd be meeting five characters, but we'd only be doing four examples, which means we're going to end with a duel with, between these last two characters. We've got our database admin over on the left and our rogue analyst on the right. Let's first start with the database admin. The database admin's priority is storing data efficiently and making use of the resources that they have in terms of server space or on the cloud, the, the cost of running, say, an AWS instance. In this example, we're going to be looking at some telecoms contracts data where a row corresponds to a single contract. So you can see here for each contract ID, we've got the product, um, the start date of that contract, how long it lasts, and then the um, total value of the contract. So that first one's worth um, 30 pounds a month for 11 months. Now, this data is really good if you want to do some simple analysis about the contracts. You know, when do contracts typically start? How long do they last on average? What's the total contract value? But the analyst wants something a little bit more than that. They want to answer the question, how much revenue are we guaranteed? Now, this is a little bit more of a complex question because when we think of contracts, we have the start date, but in terms of when we actually get paid, we're getting paid monthly. So we need data that's stored in that monthly format because what this visualization is telling us is that if we stop selling any more contracts today, then we'd run out of revenue or stop making revenue in 2020. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, the type of analysis. And so the reason why this data wouldn't work for that is because we don't have that information about the payment date. We just have the start date of the contract, not all the additional rows that we need to fill out this data set. What the rogue analyst wants from a data set is a row per contract ID per month. But the at database admin isn't going to be too happy about that because that's just going to multiply the number of rows in this data set. And the rogue analyst can't really do anything about it either because they're not a database admin. They don't have access to a database to be able to create that data for themselves. So we're going to take a look at how PrEP can help you answer the subscriptions revenue challenge. So for the last time during this session, I'm going to open a PrEP flow and connect to SQL Server. So this is the thing that the database admin is managing. So we've got our telecoms contracts data. It's formatted in the same way I mentioned um, and you saw on screen. The thing I want to point out here is that when I switch this to detail, um, we've got one row per contract ID. So it's, as I scroll down, that doesn't change. Kind of standard. So the thing we need to be able to pad this data out with those additional monthly payment state is what we call a scaffold table. A scaffold table is just a table that we're going to use in a product join, which I'll come on to explain, um, to multiply those rows out. So here, all we need is the number of months that a contract could last for, so 24 rows for the 24 months, and then an additional column called key, which just contains the number one. Let me go ahead and also add that key column to this data set. So this is key, and it's just the number one, same thing. Let's hit save on that, and we can see it's generated there as a column. Let's bring in our scaffold table. And then join the two together. And here we can see the inner join being performed. It's joining key on key. And this is what we mean by a product join. We're taking all 1,000 rows in that original contracts data set and joining them to all 24 rows 
in the um, scaffolding table. So the result set is 24,000 rows. And it's really easy to spot that and understand the data duplication that's going on but that we want in this scenario um, using this interface. And I can highlight this again by just adding in a clean step again. And now if we look at each individual contract ID, we'll see that there are 24 rows associated with it. Everyone following so far? Yeah. I'm glad. This is an example pulled from a Jedi session. And then this session is a beginner session. Um, so let me go ahead and remove those key fields. And the thing is, we've got what we need to be able to do our analysis. There's just a couple of bits and pieces missing. The first thing is, we know that contract ID 1, for example, only lasts 11 months. So we don't need it to have 24 rows. So we start by just adding a filter. So let's go ahead and filter values where the number of months is less than the final duration of the contract. Just a simple um, Boolean field. When I hit save on that, we'll now see these rows updates on the histogram so that now contract ID 1 has 11 rows associated with it. Contract ID 2 has 12 rows associated with it. It's a row per month that that contract lasts for. The, net, the final two things that we need for our analysis to be able to actually produce the visualization we want is the payment date. Yikes. I'm just going to grab my charger. <laughs> I should have done this before I started. Um, yeah, so what we need is our payment dates. So from our start date, all we need to do is add to that start date the month in which we are, we're at with that contract. So that's a simple calculated field. I'll call it payment date, which is date add. I'll just zoom in on this. In months, we want to add the number of months, so the month um, we're in, in terms of that contract, to this start date. So when I hit apply on that, oh, and save, we'll see that that new column has been generated. Last thing to do is the amount of each contract um, was stored as the total value of that contract. But what we need is the monthly payment. We need to distribute that total amount across the duration. So we just need to do a simple division, amount over duration, and I'll call that monthly payment. Now with Tableau Prep, if I'm not sure if the data prep output is right for the analysis I need, I don't have to commit to adding an output step. I can just right click and preview this in Tableau Desktop to see if it does the job. And then if I'm not happy with it, I can always go back to the flow and make some extra changes. So here we've got our monthly payment. We'll bring in payment date by month break it down by product, and we're starting to get towards the viz that we saw earlier. We just need to switch it to an area chart. And there we go. This example is designed to show you how um, Tableau Prep can, do, can solve the problem of bridging that gap between the data prep output in terms of the what the database admin has access to versus what the analyst needs to be able to do more interesting types of analysis. Because now with that subscriptions revenue chart we saw a second ago, we can start to look at monthly payments and actually when is money coming in. That's the important question when you're running a business is when are we getting paid rather than when are people signing contracts. So hopefully through these four examples, you have a better understanding of what Tableau Prep can do for you and see where you might fit in as a potential user of Tableau Prep. So I'm going to take a moment just to do kind of hands up style and kind of get a read of the room, see who we have in the audience. So hands up if you kind of see yourself as the data DJ, so someone using Tableau Prep for not just themselves, but also for the wider organization in terms of publishing data sources. Yeah, that seems to be most of you. Logs investigator, I'm guessing it's just you two. <laughs> um, workaround wizard, any more advanced desktop users in the room? Yeah. And then database admins? Yeah. And finally, rogue analysts. Yeah, I think that one's the, the one, the people I always see getting most excited about prep because it's for themselves rather than for anyone else. It's a bit selfish. 
So you're probably wondering how you get your hands on Tableau Prep. So we come to the probably the most boring slide in my presentation. It's just the nitty gritty details. So, um, so for existing desktop users, the good news is that you already have Tableau Prep. That product key is already available to you in your customer portal and will be valid until 2020, um, after which point you'll need to speak to your account manager because I don't know what, what's going on after 2020, unfortunately. Um, for any new users, you can get a free 14-day trial from tableau.com slash prep. And you can also speak to your account manager about the creator package because prep comes as part of a package where you get desktop, prep, and then a seat on either Tableau online or server. So three products for the price of one. So I've answered one of your questions. Are there any more questions from the room? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So part of my task is I've got loads of SQL steps running to get it into just a few tables, which is the tablet. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that to be any quicker to execute than what it's done, mm -hmm. but that'd be an awful lot easier to order and improve what it's done. Yeah. Because um, what I've got at the moment, I've got an Excel chart that backs up all my, that shows all my steps visually. Mm -hmm. So I can always see, because I'm not going to remember what they've done. So I yeah. Can Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Yeah, so the flow at the moment is a one-off thing in terms of publishing. So when you hit run flow, it publishes an extract and it's a static file. We are going to be bringing scheduling as part of the product, but for the moment, I can't say, unfortunately, and Arthur's not in the room for me to pass the question on to him. Um, No, so that's the part that isn't um, is schedulable so just yet. Because you don't publish the whole flow, you just publish the extract itself to Tableau Online. No, not with not with prep flows. They work with published data sources, but not specifically prep flows. Yeah. So. Yeah, so for the moment with the scheduling, it just means someone has to hit that run flow. So in your case, it would be getting up at four in the morning, unfortunately, and hitting run flow on that. So for you, probably, I would use this time while we're building out that um, prep server kind of functionality to test the question you're, you're asking in terms of performance. Like, can you actually build the flow out in prep? Is it possible to condense those 700 tables down using prep? In terms of the performance question that you had kind of um, before that, um, because it's pushing those operations down to the database level, if it works in SQL, it will work in prep in the same way. We had the same question when someone asked, um, can I now do everything that I do in Tableau Desktop in prep instead? And yes, because the performance, it's essentially the same performance as a live connection. So it's all down to what you have on the database side. Yeah. What will be the next connections? Next connections? Yeah, so the two big ones that I know that are kind of priority at the moment, just from, uh, in my own experience as well as general experience, is um, Google BigQuery and then Hadoop. So some of the more bigger, heftier databases are the ones that people are asking for. Yeah. Any other questions? I'll be sticking around at the end anyway. Um, so on that note on scheduling, that kind of brings me to looking ahead. So we know that you guys are crying out for more data connectors, more transformations, and of course scheduling to make it that enterprise ready solution. Part of the reason why we wanted to release prep as soon as possible is so that um, our customers could work on building the flows and ensuring that Tableau prep performs and being able to give them the output they need. 
then if it's ready for them, then they can go ahead and use PrEP to be able to do, do the analysis, um, not the analysis, the data PrEP and start scheduling it. The other thing to note is that PrEP is on a 30-day release cycle rather than Tableau Desktop's 90-day release cycle. So already we're on Tableau PrEP 2018.1.2. And so one example of a new feature that's come in from um, the first release to now the second release is a new transformation. So you saw me there do an example of just a simple pivot, so taking a few columns and turning them into rows. What, a, what we've introduced now is the ability to do a coordinated pivot. So that's taking two sets of multiple columns and then pivoting them at the same time. So one example of a use case for that is converting longitude and latitude data into a format suitable to be able to do path analysis. So you can start to join points on a map um, and look at kind of origin destination analysis. So if you are keen to learn more, unfortunately, this is the last session of the day, but all these sessions have been recorded, so you'll um, get recordings of them as well as um, from our post-conference site, the slide decks and the workbooks and so on used in them. So I'll just mention them anyway. We've got visualizing survey data that was presented by Emma. Um, it's for the workaround wizard or for someone using survey data that just wants to learn a little bit more. Um, for the two server admins in the room, um, Tom Christian and Alex Ross yesterday, uh, earlier this morning, presented a session on the tools available to you to monitor your Tableau server usage. And then finally, um, Bethany um, presented a session on how Tableau and Tableau Prep helped solve a personal life crisis. And now that that session is finished, I can kind of tell the story around that. She actually used Tableau Prep to help her stay in the country. She's a Canadian citizen and um, she needed Tableau Prep to confirm that um, she had stayed in the UK for the number of days required to get her permanent res residency. So it's a really good session and I encourage you to check that one out um, after conference. Yeah, it's really good. I sat in her dry run and it was very exciting and like kind of full of tension. It was like, will she make it? <laughs> if you are still hungry for more, we've of course got tableau.com slash learn. In the same way we've always had those on-demand training videos for desktop, we've also now got some on-demand on videos for Tableau Prep as well. And then of course, like I mentioned, we've got the post-conference site. The only last thing I ask from you guys, I asked you to complete a survey at the beginning. I'd really appreciate if you could fill just one more survey at the end. You've seen how Tableau Prep can help me work with survey data to so help um, me out even more by keeping the, the data clean and consistent by rating this session five stars. But note that if you don't rate it five stars, you've also seen how Tableau Prep can just let me go in and change that. So I'm going to do that anyway because I need to impress Adam so I can get to conference next year as well. Um, but with that, I know I think we've ended a little bit earlier, so I'll be sticking around for any questions. I think Arthur might be stopping around the room. I can't guarantee that, but if not, I've got business cards um, that I can, I can leave um, if you have any questions for me or uh, about kind of future releases of the product and timelines on specific features. Um, but with that, I'm going to let you go home a bit earlier. <laughs> Thank you.